Welcome to our program. I'm uh, Joe Condon. And uh, today's topic is uh, a rather serious one. And we're going to try to treat uh, a serious topic in a, a lighthearted way, but it's certainly one of the most important uh, subjects in our nation right now. And um, here to talk about suicide prevention, we have with us Dr. Joseph Hunter. He is head of suicide prevention at the Stratton VA Hospital in Albany, New York. And Lawada Butler, did I get it right? Yes. Lawada Butler, who was with the Veterans Administration Hospital and also uh, works with uh, Dr. Joseph Hunter yes. on uh, suicide prevention. And the one thing I'd like everyone to understand is that Although these folks are headquartered in Albany, New York, you will uh, find them helping uh, veterans throughout New York State. And I would even suspect since uh, Albany, New York is close to Pittsfield, Mass, and Bennington, Vermont, they, they might even cross state lines to uh, help our uh, veterans who need uh, our support. Now, what I, I'm going to, sometimes people that are not exactly in a medical field are able to say in layman's terms what something is. What in you, is your definition of suicide? Basically what I see as suicide is someone has lost all hope of, what they, of a future and they decide that is better off dead than alive and so they take their life. A lot of times I don't believe that they even think about their family, friends, or loved ones that they leave behind because right then and there the only thing they can see is that they don't know how they're gonna make it till tomorrow and they don't want to because the way that life is going for them at that time it really is not at all anything that they would want to continue on till the next day. I know I'm sure we obviously you folks but I know of uh, a couple of uh, situations where uh, people have, uh, not what I referred to before going on the air, where people have committed suicide and the family is very, very angry with the person that took their own life. And I, fortunately, I've never encountered that, but I, I don't understand why would you be angry with someone who is so hopeless? I, I believe a part of the anger would be because they feel like they were left out. They feel like they didn't have a chance or an opportunity to help. They feel like the veteran did not, or who, the, whoever committed the suicide, did not give them the opportunity to to stand in the gap for them or to tell them, hey, you know, there's, there's something else out there. So I think a lot of it is that anger as well as the anger with themselves for not seeing the signs, not knowing what was going on, not, not and, and maybe to the point where they thought they felt like they let the person down. Now, the same questions for you sure. from the professional, not that mm -hmm. you were unprofessional, but <laughs> from the non-layman's side. Yeah, uh, well, so the first one's what is a suicide? Your definition of Your it. definition of a suicide, and um, I think her definition was good. Um, I think it's a it's a self destructive act. It's uh, um, there's a there's a new term. I'm trying to bring it to mind that we just came out with some new nomenclature uh, nationally, um, but basically it's a, a self violent act, um, wherein there's intention uh, to die. And um, usually, that person who who takes uh, you know those steps to to die um, certainly is at a point in their lives where they don't see another option. They are very hopeless, and they think that suicide is the best option. Um, but one thing that's a kind of a qualifier on that is that most suicides occur when someone's in a in a period of crisis, right? And we know that crises come and go in our lives, um, and so in that moment of crisis, persons people tend to be um, irrational. Rational, impulsive, you know, uh, the judgment's really not necessarily there, and the distressed state of mind. So the decision making and the behaviors when you're in a crisis are less than ideal. And I think that's where, um, you know, where I meant, uh, mentioned safety planning becomes so important because uh, there's there's a there's a time that you can recognize warning signs and intervene, not just the individual but the people around, um, and 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 get the person help. Um, 
the other piece about this is, so why do other people get angry at someone who uh, takes their life? And, and usually there's a big piece of that as a misunderstanding. 90% um, of those people who die by suicide have an underlying mental health disorder of some sort or substance abuse disorder. And so um, those disorders uh, have a number of symptoms that, you know, to the outsider, you kind of assume that they have some control or they can do something about it. But the individual who, who has got this, you know, depression or bipolar disorder or a psychosis uh, is very much crippled by that. And so in addition to having a crisis, they have this underlying mental health disorder and it, it, it makes things uh, much different than maybe the person who doesn't have those problems would, would recognize from the outside. And then the other piece of it, as Luana said, is that they're, they're angry um, at their self, th themselves also. They're, they're, um, I think more importantly is that there's an extreme emotion that they have to interpret. There's a sense of loss and oftentimes a sense of guilt that survivors um, have as a result of a loved one dying and um, so that gets translated and and maybe towards anger or self you know rage and, and depression and so forth so I mentioned earlier that crises come and go and it's usually a short-term thing most people who attempt suicide and don't die are very very glad they weren't successful so that's an important thing to keep in mind that even though in the moment you know, it's the only option, so forth for them. They feel very trapped, and, and like suicide's the only option. The truth is, um, they're, it, it's for not only the family, as Luana pointed out, but but for the individual also. It's probably not what they really want to do. You know, in terms of looking at things with a rational mind. So, with that in mind, I think that one of the things I wanted to convey today is the importance of recognizing warning signs. Uh, for people who are in trouble. So, for example, in the case that you gave, uh, someone is getting his affairs in order, right? Uh, that's a different, you know. You might see mood changes. Maybe someone's not reacting as you might expect to the death of a spouse. Like, something doesn't seem quite mm -hmm. right, you know. When you start seeing um, behavior that's out of character for an individual, um, or you hear them saying, like, they, 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 you know, their life has no purpose or meaning anymore, or they're talking or writing about death, or they're seeking access to means, like to buy a gun or to get uh, medications to overdose. Those are kind of those acute warning signs that you want to pick up on. And there are a lot of more subtle uh, warning signs. One of them is um, you know, difficulty sleeping. Um, anger and anxiety can be, especially when they're out of character uh, for an individual, um, uh, statements of hopelessness. You know those those kinds of things. So um, I think for the uh, families and loved ones and friends, um, there's an opportunity to tune in and pick up on the warning signs, and understanding that you know that there there probably is you know even in the case there you know when I say mental health disorder substance abuse disorder seems kind of harsh, but an adjustment disorder is an example of a mental health disorder, and essentially adjustment disorders when something terrible happens to you and you have a hard time dealing with it. And so that, you know, so it's, it's, it's okay and that, um, to, to, you know, be experiencing those things and, it, and it's normal and that a person will get through it. But it also sometimes takes the help and the, and the, um, the eyes and ears of other people around them to, to support them. Um, if you're seeing symptoms of depression like inability to sleep or sleeping too much or you know hopelessness um, you know low energy you know and those kinds of things that we've been talking about certainly it's a very very important role for the family to identify the warning signs and, and uh, help them uh, help the veterans seek help and the other piece that I want to mention is that the VA has a slew of resources and it uh, grows uh, every day and we're just about out of time okay. so what I would like as you go to the school of resources how can people get in contact with you sure. because as I said you guys go right. all through New York State all right so let me mention first the suicide prevention hotline 1-800-273-TALK or 8255 it's 1-800-273-8255 um, we have community-based clinics with mental health components in just about every community around going south to Kingston north to Plattsburgh alone Elizabethtown West to Sydney so well thank you very much and those folks our viewers will contact you uh, Luana Butler of the Veterans Administration and Dr. Joseph Hunter congratulations on becoming a doctor of the Veterans Administration they've been talking about suicide and suicide prevention I'm Joe Condon have yourself a wonderful day